Hi, Brandon with Spaghetti and Meeples. Uh, two things. First, uh, when you're going to do a live stream, figure out how to do that, test it. Don't use an event as the test. Two, make sure you've turned your mic on. Those are two separate incidents that uh, both have to do with me attempting to share my thoughts on cartography with you. Uh, uh, quickly, I will tell you. The first one was, I was like, oh, I'm home, I have a break from between this class and that class, I'm gonna do a quick video live stream of me unboxing cartography, it'll be awesome. And it'll save and so people could still watch it later even if they missed the live stream. And that will allow me to test out something I wanna do for GameStorm 18 that's coming up next weekend. Uh, or this weekend, depending on when you watch this. March 18th is when I'll be there. Look for us, Spaghetti and Meeples. We might have something to hand out to you. Who knows? Anyway, what was the whole point? Cartography. I wanted to share about cartography. And the live stream, except for the fact that it didn't stream or record, went really well. It flowed nicely. It was beautiful. Then I made notes for the second attempt of recording it because I knew it wasn't going to going to go as well uh, the second time. And it did, it went really beautifully. And then I realized I didn't have the mic on. So this is attempt number three. I'm keeping my notes though. Cartography, John Adams. This was on Kickstarter and I did back it. That's how I got it. This was not free. Uh, we also did an interview with John Adams, the designer, who, uh, when we were board game jungle, back before we were spaghetti and meeples. Oh, when I first saw this, I was just, I fell in love instantly. And you're going to hear me during the course of this video talk about the design a lot. Although now that I've said that, maybe I won't. Who knows? But look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. And all of the pictures that I saw were beautiful. And all of the communication on the Kickstarter page was great. It was responsive to backer comments. It was asking backers, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Hey, John would be like, I'm looking at redesigning the tile this way. And people would say, ah, I don't like it. Or yes, I like it. Or hey, I want to change the box. No, leave the box because we love the box. The box is perfect. Don't change it. And he didn't for us. I'll get to that in a bit. For the backers, he didn't change the box. Where am I going with this? Again, this is why I have notes. So great communication at the beginning. Very responsive. We got to do an interview. Um, and then it got backed, which was awesome, that's what we want, right? And even better, Playford Games picked it up. And that's what I want for indie designers, either to be able to start their own business with Kickstarter and their own games, or barring that, they get picked up by somebody else and their game gets to be sent out into the wild more places than it would have been without, uh, a, you know, a company picking it up. And that's when communication dropped off. And I don't know if it was a function of John thinking Playford Games was taking over, Playford Games thinking John was taking over, if it was just a big rest nap after a successful intense Kickstarter campaign. I don't know. It was a bummer though. That's what I do know. Especially since in the beginning everything was so open. There was back and forth all the time. There were periods of time after Playford Games took over where people would post comments, questions and there would be no response for a while. There weren't updates for, okay, and don't hold me to this, I might have this factually wrong. I can say there weren't updates for more than a month and it feels like there were not updates for longer than that with the exception of eventually John getting in and commenting, specifically replying to individual people. The other thing is that cartography wound up being late, which was disappointing for a number of reasons. One, because everything leading up to the end of the campaign was done so well. And two, there were some early promises that it might be early and it looked like it might be early based on everything that was being told to us and probably being told to John. Uh, but I do think that was prior to Playford Games picking it up and I'm not picking on you Playford Games. I'm simply saying that I don't know what happened. That's it. And so I don't know if you changed the production warehouse and that sets everything back, which gets me to valid reasons for having a delay in Kickstarter. So again, I mentioned this was especially disappointing to me given how great everything started. I do see on the internet people make comments, oh, my Kickstarter is three, three months late. Oh, my game's not gonna be here for six months. It's been nine months and I haven't seen my game. 
And then someone will comment, yeah, it's Kickstarter. What are you going to do? Uh, get over it. Stop complaining. Just deal with it. That's what happens. No! You need to hold your Kickstarter people to the schedules that they have set. If you cannot set a schedule you can meet, set a different schedule. That's how it works. A really great example would be Ed Barriff. And I never know if I'm saying his last name right. I uh, mostly know him as Edo on YouTube, but he's uh, it's either Bereff or Bereff. Ed, please correct me. Put it in the, in the comments or something. Um, siblings Trouble, Gem Pack Cards. Early, man. Those were early. And he set a realistic goal. I think it was almost a year out. I can't remember. There are too many things to remember. And then everything showed up early. He knew what he was doing, he knew what was a realistic goal, and he tried to beat it, and he did. That's awesome! I want to see more of that. Um, yeah, that's that's really, I think, where that thought's going, is hold people accountable. And I know people get on the Kickstarters and make comments like, Give me my stuff! I'm so angry! Uh, I don't think that's productive. But what I'm, my bigger point, my larger point, is don't settle into the apathy of everything's late all the time. That's really not the way the world should work. So, cartography. Let's get back to this. It was late. It did show up before Christmas, uh, and I didn't get a chance to play it yet, and there are a few reasons. I'm holding up two fingers, but there were a few reasons. Three. There were a few reasons. There might just be two. First, I wanted to do a, an unboxing straight out of the shrink wrap because this game felt so special to me, and I'd followed it and I was really connected, and I had a lot of highs and lows waiting for this game to show up. So I wanted to wait and do a proper out of the shrink wrap unboxing for everybody. And so I did, eventually, I had to wait till the time was right, and I tried to do the live stream, that didn't work out. I did one previous take prior to this. So in the live stream that didn't work out, I was able to unpunch everything and just explore and enjoy and go, oh, wow, this is all brand new to me. This is the third time of my doing this, opening this up. Uh, I don't know if all of the wonder will come across at this point, but honestly, it's beautiful. I mentioned earlier I would talk about the design. I'm going to talk about it again. It's beautifully designed. It's a beautiful, beautiful game. Uh, for you who do not know what it's like, it is often compared to Go, but uh, it's really its own thing. So. Cartography by John Adams through Play for Games. Uh, so first thing we have is a list of backers on a theme appropriate paper. It looks like old parchment, it feels like magazine, but it looks beautiful. Uh, the rules. So this was the thing that really impressed me, uh, not just that they carried through the design into the manual, but the amount of different languages. Uh, often games will have multiple languages for the instruction manual, but they seem to top out at like two or three, occasionally four. This has more than that, even. Um, how cool is that? And that's one thing I do remember during the Kickstarter, there was a lot of backer involvement, and I believe that uh, backers did help with translations and supplying additional languages. That was the other thing. It felt like a great community. All right. The other thing I want to mention is when I originally unboxed it, everything was in the boards, the punch boards, and there was a divider in here, and it looked gorgeous, and now, thanks to me, it just looks like a pile of stuff. Um, and I didn't even put it all away properly from the last video. So <laughs> let's start. Look at the tiles. All right, look at the tiles. Gorgeous design. Gorgeous design. Look at that. Um, I'm showing you two blank ones. Here, there we go. There's some river. Look at that. Look at the river. And if you can't see this well enough, I don't have a camera crew and I uh, can't have somebody move closer. Go ahead and look up Cartography, the board game. Check out the close-ups on the uh, Kickstarter site. And then you have, it's a two-player game. There was a four-player backer, Geely Bob, but I did the two-player. Um, and it comes with the player pieces, which are really well made too. They're smooth, perfectly round. Uh, I really enjoy the blue color a lot. And the orange is okay. It's a little bright for me. I'd honestly like to see something a little duller like that. I don't know. It's good though. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, 
yeah, that's it. That's everything. I have finally, hopefully, made this video. I'm looking at the levels to make sure the mic is still working. Uh, <laughs> all right. Cartography by John Adams uh, via Kickstarter and Play for Games. Check out Play for Games. Check out John Adams. I do believe that there will be expansions and additional things with this someday. I hope. I hope. I like it. I like it. That's it. I have unboxed cartography and talked way too much about my feelings on Kickstarter. That's everything. Thanks for watching. Next time, uh, you sh well, we'll, we'll ha we have a podcast coming prior to GameStorm 18, and then we'll be live from GameStorm 18. Again, look for us, Spaghetti and Meeples. This is what I look like. I will be there with my whole family, and we might have goodies to hand out to you. If you come up to me and say, hey, Spaghetti and Meeples, uh, I might hand you something. I might also just walk up to you and hand you something without you asking, and you won't know who I am, and it will weird you out. And that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Brandon with Spaghetti and Meeples. I'll see you later.